time to say something I did not last Tuesday. Don't forget to donate to the IMPMD in order to raise awareness for premenstrual disorders and take care of your mental health. Remember, you are loved, you are wanted, and you got this. And unlike Bertram, you are not forgotten. Now on with the video. What took you so long? What took you so ugly? Hey guys, alright, I have a big project on Friday and I definitely need a light breath mint to ready viewers. I believe this one is fine, plus this video might make a good drinking game, who knows. Hi, I'm Kitty Monk and I'm here to talk to you about Family Guy, or more specifically, Bertram, Stewie's half-brother and Peter's son, if you couldn't guess by their appearances. Now, Family Guy is notable for their guest stars, even celebrities sometimes guest star as the themselves, despite only getting one or two lines, as was the case with Ben Stiller. One of these long-term celebrities is Wallace Shawn, who you might remember from The Princess Bride, My Dinner with Andre, Toy Story, really? He was Toy Story? The Incredibles, A Goofy Movie, and Young Sheldon. Seriously? He was the professor. I know, right? It's inconceivable. And wow, he's got a huge resume. Did not realize he was in that much stuff. Anyhow, Wallace Shawn guest starred as Bertram in three episodes, Emission Impossible, Sibling Rivalry, and The Big Bang Theory. Ah, oh, that's ironic. The thing is, despite his brief appearances, Bertram left a lasting impression on viewers. And it sucks he doesn't appear anymore, because there was so much they could have done with him that they never did. And we were also left with a ton of unanswered questions, so let's discuss. In Emission Impossible, Peter and Lois go to care for Lois's sister Carol while she's pregnant, after her new husband left her. And as soon as the baby can crawl, it'll probably leave me too, just like my eight husbands. Because her OBGYN is Dr. Hartman, they end up having to deliver the baby themselves. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he takes after his Uncle Peter. Peter, he's Carol's baby. Give him to her. Oh, oh, oh uh, yeah. Seriously, what the F happened to that baby? Did the husband take it? Did she put it up for adoption? I'm just saying, it's like May, Chris, and Stewie have a cousin they've never met or mentioned. And could you imagine Adam West as a stepfather? This incident causes Peter and Lois to be overcome with baby fever and want to start to try for another child. You're gonna have a baby brother, buddy. Or a sister. Oh, a new baby. That's wonderful. He'll call me when Kojak starts. What? Which causes Stewie to resent them, because this means his parents will stop paying attention to him. Another baby? But, but I'm the baby. Why the deuce would they want to replace me? Stewie, speaking from experience, that doesn't matter. They still love you, and you, you were loved first. Well, technically Meg was, but you know what I'm saying. Well, technically third, but no time for semantics. So Stewie tries to delay his parents' coupling through any means necessary. As God is my witness, from this day forward, Peter and Lois shall not conceive. However, they catch on and decide to have a fun, rum-filled night with gross stuff and no kids. And solo from the pet rock. Oh no, oh no, no, no! Oh, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. Needing a last resort, Stewie ends up making a machine that will allow him to shrink down to microscopic size and enter Peter. Gross. That way, he can make sure to destroy any of his paternal's possible potency while they're doing it. Ew, he's lucky that Lois and Peter take forever to get to the actual act itself. Thank god for foreplay. <laughs> But that moment was pretty funny. Along the way, he discovers a lone warrior, Bertram, which I know he's not known as Bertram at the time, just to make it easier on myself, he's Bertram. Bertram sees that Stewie is an outsider and tries to fight him, which makes sense, Stewie is trying to kill him. I just like the callback to Chitty Chitty Death Pang with all of the Star Wars references. I know many things. Indeed. Quite. Yes. Hmm. Then perhaps we should exchange monosyllabic expressions of arrogance in person. Oh, hmm. Yes. Bertram confesses that he knows a lot about Stewie, including his name, because he's watched him from afar. You've seen that little gleam in the fat man's eye? That twinkle? That's me, plotting my escape! Stewie thinks he's bluffing, but they discover they actually have a lot in common. People who send pictures of their families as Christmas cards? Oh, oh people who use the word guesstimate. Jason, Jason Patrick. Patrick! Ooh! 
Not only that, but the both of them especially want to kill Lois, which kind of makes me wonder if this was a learned behavior Stewie had after he was born, or if he heard about her when he was in utero like he did with the man in white. Just saying, imagine being trapped inside of Lois for nine months. As a result, they quickly bond and Stewie thinks, hey, maybe it'll be a good thing to have a brother who's not Chris. However, their time together is cut short because Stewie has to return to normal size and Bertram has to be born. I guess this is goodbye for now. The problem is, during the time Stewie was in Peter, ew, Lois and Peter came to a conclusion. They were having a fun night, and if they had another baby so soon, they might not get another free moment. Better they just wait. I don't know. I mean, Stewie alone needs so much attention. Maybe we should hold off on having another baby. <gasps> Yeah, you may be right. No, no, no! Hey, at least Stewie can still have fun with his parents. Because Lois doesn't want to go any further, Peter goes into the bathroom. Which is bad news for Bertram, who is gonna drown in gross toilet water. You killed my brother! How could you, you, you- Oh my god, the twinkle. He's, he's alive. Oh good, he's actually alive. He's more clever than I thought. Perhaps too clever. Well, I mean, be careful what you wish for, Stuart. He's apparently just like you. Good thing we know, because Family Guy has a strict sense of status quo, Peter and Lois will never have another child. I mean, there was that band episode where Lois became a surrogate, and after the parents died, they terminated the pregnancy, rather than carry the baby to term. But don't worry, this is not the last time we see Bertram sibling right rivalry came a knock in literally a season later. Don't worry, they don't actually have a kid, he's not a griffin. Oh, but how is he born? We'll get there. One night, Lois and Peter have a pregnancy scare, but thankfully there's no bun in Lois's oven. However, this makes Lois decide they should make sure not to expand their family. And to make sure they'll have nothing to worry about, Lois should get her tubes tied, an idea she is not receptive to. Why should I get my tubes tied? You should get a vasectomy. First of all, I don't know what that is, and second of all, no freaking way. Is it bad as a kid? I thought they literally tied your tubes together like a pretzel or a little bow. I didn't realize till I was a freshman in high school that they just snipped and clipped your tubes. However, Lois disagrees and says that Peter should instead get a vasectomy. The male equivalent of a woman getting her tubes tied, except it's actually a lot quicker and safer. And according to Beavis and Butthead, you can just walk off afterwards like nothing happened, and even get kicked right down there like it's nothing. Plus, from what I hear, vasectomies are usually much easier to undo, at least for a time, I'm not totally sure. My point is, if Peter ever wanted to have another baby, say, a couple of years from now, he potentially could. It's not that big a deal. A bunch of the guys on the force have had vasectomies, and their lives haven't changed at all. Would you ever have one? NEVER! The guy suggests that if Peter is that upset, he could bank some of his man gravy at the old sperm bank, just in case. I've uh, got an appointment to uh, banish a white Russian from my Kremlin. Ugh, lucky guys. You get to go to the doctor and have a fun time. When we get eggs removed, we gotta inject ourselves and essentially undergo surgery. And you can only have your eggs removed under certain circumstances. Like, you have to have a certain BMI and everything. Curse you, biology, and and curse you nature. When he gets to the bank to make a deposit, lucky, he tries to make the transition quick by going into the storage room, where this happens. Oh, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god! Oh god, I... I think I feel them moving. Uh, uh. To clean up his mess, Peter ends up refilling all of the jars, like a trooper, and doesn't tell anybody. Around the same time, a couple comes in to get some man gravy to have a baby of their own. I think one of them was Meg's gym teacher. I don't know if that was just the crew trying to save on characters, or trying to be clever, or what. Nine months later, the baby is born. 
What the juice? It's a sequel episode. OMG. I didn't realize. Inconceivable. While this is going on, Stewie was at the playground asserting his dominance over the other kids and bullies by being a bully himself, but better. No! Jungle Jim mine! Hey, where'd you get the Pete Rose haircut? <laughs> Wanna feel my wee bark in their grapes? One day, he notices the kids crowding around somebody and spies a certain someone he hasn't seen for ages. You! Well, well, well. If it isn't my half-brother, Stewie. Bertram! I know, right? Inconceivable! I haven't seen you since our microscopic encounter. All right, this is one part of Wasted Opportunity I want to talk about. Bertram is a great character, and because he's Peter's son, he is technically a griffin. The problem is, Stewie is the only griffin who actually interacts with Bertram, discounting Brian. Nobody knows of his existence but him. Even Lois, who does appear in this episode, doesn't notice there's a child who strangely looks like Stewie and doesn't question it. How cool would it be if Peter found out he had another son, or Meg and Chris a half-brother, or what would Lois say when she found out about Peter's accident and the fact he could potentially have hundreds of little hymns running around. They did have an episode where it turns out Peter donated enough man milk to hydrate in elementary school, but they act like Peter did it years ago, not during this episode, just to have the conflict with one of the boys. The only other griffin that Bertram interacts with is Brian in the the Big Bang Theory, and he's never like, you have a half-brother, or Bertram, who's Bertram, or something like that. So what happened with that kid on the playground? He won this round, Brian, but I'm going back tomorrow! It's like we missed an episode or something. Still, there's much to enjoy about this episode. What I liked about Bertram and Stewie was their friendly rivalry amongst each other. They have these huge grand fights over dominance of a frickin' playground, and at one point, Bertram even gets him off the playing field by giving him chicken pox. Why are you wearing makeup? <gasps> chicken pox! Damn you, Bertram! I thought we called no biological warfare! You swore on the seesaw! So, does that mean they had full-on conversations about what they could and couldn't do? Because if so, that's adorable. Also, a recurring idea I haven't really talked about is the extended fight sequences of these two. They go on for a while, but they're really good, like the jungle gym or the giant aerial plane fight. Eventually, Bertram is defeated, like this. Any last words? You wouldn't kill me, would you? So what happened with that kid you were telling me about? Oh, he admitted defeat and ran off. What a mook. Good job, Stewie. Good job. The thing is, after this episode, Bertram did not appear for many, many years. And I get it. His voice actor was probably expensive or busy or both. It's just there was so much they could have done with him story-wise. For example, what's his home life like? Is he like Stewie where he doesn't like his mom? But because he has two moms, he hates both of them? Or just the woman who carried him? Do they pay attention to him? Are they good parents? Do they know he's an evil genius? and nurture it? Or are they as stupid as the Griffins? Does Bertram have his own talking dog? Maybe an Italian dog that sounds like a polle walnuts. Besides, Bertram could have been a good rival to Stewie or even a good ally. Remember that episode where Stewie meets Penelope, who is voiced by the illustrious Kate Blanchett? What if that could have been Bertram's identity? A version of Stewie that likes his brother, but causes chaos for the sake of chaos, not for world domination. But no, he has to be a villain. Because reasons they never fully explain. That sucks. In the Big Bang Theory, Suey has been using his time machine to mess with events in Brian's life, including the infamous peanut butter jelly time dance. Hey, I know what'll cheer you up. Hey, where the hell's my banana thing? Uh, oh, oh my god! Oh, Stewie! That is so funny! Oh, I did not see that coming! Inconceivable! Eventually, Brian catches on and starts to fiddle with the button. And this happens. Non-existence. No past, no future, no universe. 
but still somehow a large, brightly colored promo for the Cleveland show. They end up outside their universe in a white void where they can sing heart and soul a cappella style because they invent their own rules of physics. To jettison themselves back to reality, they end up having to make a big explosion or something like that. I don't know how math and or science works. If I did, I would be studying math and or science, not English and gender studies. Now step onto the return pad. Now brace yourself. Hopefully the explosion will propel us into reality. Thankfully, they get home safe and sound. To be fair, while I don't know that much about math and science, I am somewhat familiar with certain concepts. Somebody for 500 points, tell me, what is the Big Bang Theory besides that one show? Yeah, the theory that the universe started with a massive outward explosion from a singularity of infinite mass and infinite density. Check out the big brain on Brian, good. Damn, somebody was paying attention at the Brown University School of science. Really, is that what it's called? Anyhow, as it turns out, the pair were not outside the universe. They were at a point before the universe existed. I don't know, it's complicated, just let Stewie tell it. Time and space didn't exist until my explosion. Which means I created the universe, Brian. The universe created me so I could create it so it could create me and so on. Do you get it? I guess I kinda do. Later, Stewie goes to his time machine guy where he's spied on by a certain somebody with a football head. So, Stewie Griffin invented a time machine. Bertram's back, now that is inconceivable. In Bertram's last appearance, we saw that he and Stewie had a normal rivalry, albeit Stewie style. Here, his new goal isn't to be better than him, it's to make sure Stewie can never be. This time, his plan is to use the time machine to kill one of Stewie's ancestors. Hello, Stewie. I am gonna kill one of your ancestors, effectively erasing you from history! What? Where did this sudden hate come from? It's do we steal his favorite toy or something? I can get being mad at somebody, but really this much? Even Stewie wouldn't retcon somebody. Besides, I feel in a way, even if Stewie wasn't responsible for the Big Bang, Bertram would probably cease to exist too. Just saying, Stewie was the reason Bertram wasn't born the first time, and having a third child was a huge reason Peter donated sperm, aka the sperm that eventually became Bertram. I feel like this plot would have been equally interesting. Maybe Bertram could kill Stewie's ancestor without Stewie having created the universe, and then he could be like, oh crap, why am I disappearing? Eh, I don't think it really matters. But the one good part I want to say about this episode is how Bertram was able to distract Stewie from stopping him. Play with this. At least you can spend your final moments doing something you enjoy. <laughs> Look at me! I'm mowing the lawn! <laughs> oh, I know, I love those. Because Bertram succeeded in killing Stewie's ancestor, the universe begins to unravel, like my mind during my luteal phase. Awareness is important. And Stewie and Brian realize the only thing they can do is go back in time and make sure they can stop Bertram. And to add to the tension, they only only have one shot, and they cannot throw it away, because Bertram stole the return pad. As it turns out, the ancestor Bertram killed was Leonardo da Vinci, and he is Lois's ancestor, not Peter's. That's who Bertram's here to kill! So, that means you're Italian? Of course, my love for SpaghettiOs and smoking on the toilet. It all makes sense. Well, if we're being honest here, it seems like the Pewterschmitz and the Griffins intermarried so much, they could probably rival the Hasbergs in terms of relations. Who really knows? And speaking of, fun fact, I'm not nitpicking, I was just curious. Apparently, Da Vinci had no children. He probably had a bunch of nibblings because he had 22 half-siblings, but he had no known spouse or offspring or illegitimate children or anything like that. So he has no descendants today. Eventually, Bertram shows up to kill Da Vinci, why do I keep saying it like that? Which leads into a great big aerial battle, like I told you before. However, things begin to suck big time, as Bertram has Da Vinci right at his mercy. That's when Brian and Stewie tell him the truth. The resulting explosion was the Big Bang. So if you kill me, you're killing yourself and everything else that ever existed or will exist. 
worth it! Which I know the episode portrays as Bertram being so consumed with white-hot hatred that he wants to kill Stewie regardless of what happens. But on the one hand, how does he know they're not bluffing? Just saying. Unlike them, he did not see everything collapse. However, I would argue, couldn't he just kill Stewie himself, not Da Vinci? He wants to make sure Stewie isn't around, and that probably would be just as sweet. Stewie already created the universe, he would have nothing to worry about. The pair tussle a tiny bit more until... What's your favorite kind of bottled water? Huh? Mine's Arrowhead. Oh, come on! All of that potential! Gone with the flick of a crossbow. Inconceivable! Kenny, you're saying that a lot. I don't know what you mean. Screw you, Catherine, my underused, more expressive clone. Oh, and if you're wondering, Stewie does manage to make sure he comes into existence by giving Da Vinci's girlfriend his DNA. Wait, what? Da Vinci's girlfriend showed up. So I injected her with my DNA, put a sample of my DNA in a syringe, and I injected her on the staircase, the couch, and the balcony. Well, whatever the case, thank God. Yeah, we're not questioning that. And he hides underneath the house in stasis for 500 years, give or take. Which gives me questions, but hey, boo. A candle? I can get a candle now. You couldn't have grabbed me one of his original notebooks? You know, I didn't have to bring you back anything. Anyhow, poor Bertram, a life that never grew. Drink up, brothers, you know how, and spell a drop for Bertram, the youth cut down in his prime. A great boil to Stewie, just not used as much as they probably should have. Imagine him interacting with Penelope. Oh, but what are his mothers gonna say? Look, I don't know. It just, they lost their only child that we know of. I don't even think he's referenced nowadays. It's sad, really. It's like the writers forgot about him. Anyway, I'll see y'all on Friday. Um, bye. Wait, just one more for the road. <clears throat> Inconceivable. Now I'm gonna go drink poison. Well, now what? Wanna play 20 questions? Sure. Uh, is it a man? Yes. Is he famous? Yes. Is he under 40? No. Over 40? Yes. Is it Richard Mulligan? Yes!